Coming up, the Phillies walk it off and the Angels almost let a win slip away in Detroit. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. Local experts join us to go over all the action for you from yesterday across Major League Baseball. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. The Angels gave up a big lead in the ninth inning, but reset and beat the Tigers in the 10th in Detroit yesterday. Our Locked On Angels host tells you the keys to L.A. pulling out a win that almost got away. A word of advice if you ever find yourself uh, hosting a podcast for your favorite baseball team, don't type out the final score tweet until the third out is completed in the ninth inning. What's going on, everybody? John Frisch, one half of Locked On Angels. Look, the Angels were cruising right along against the Tigers on Tuesday as Griffin Canning went five innings pitch with eight strikeouts. Mike Moustakis got the scoring started early. Taylor Ward, Renjifo, those guys add on with some good base running from Andrew Velasquez and Shohei Otani. And then the ninth inning happened. There was an air to start the inning on Renjifo. Carlos Estevez gives up a couple of hits, runs. Then there's a ground rule double over the wall that Mickey Moniak got turned around on. It caused the game to go to 6-6 and then extra innings. Fortunately, the Angels were able to come back and score. And then Aaron Loop shut it down. Surprise, surprise. There we go. Going in the loop mode. All right, friends, we'll talk about this one on Lockdown Angels. We hope you'll join us. You know, Suarez drove in a pair of big runs in the ninth to break a tie with the Twins and give the Mariners a win. Our Lockdown hosts take you through the final in Minnesota. Well, friends, we're back from the Twins game and it was an ugly one. But if there is a silver lining to the Twins losing 9-7 tonight, it is that the Twins have found the level or the depth of their relief pitching woes. Be easy to say, oh, Emilio Pagan gave up a homer, but the reality is the Twins are just absolutely stretched thin right now with how guys have been used recently and that sort of thing. So to be fair, the Twins do need relief help. It may not be to the extent that it looked like tonight, but finally now we know the Twins are going to need to get at least one reliever. I would not be shocked if it's two. Love to see David Robertson, Brent Suter, Michael Fulmer, any number of guys. There's really no reason for the Twins not to go out and get a relief pitcher. And that was the silver lining from tonight. Not much of a silver lining when you lose 9-7, though. Let's talk soon. Coming up, Alec Baum gave the Phillies a win in the ninth yesterday. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Today's edition of Locked On Game to Game is brought to you by Game Time. If you're buying tickets last minute to a show, a game, or a concert, it shouldn't be stressful, and it really shouldn't be that expensive either. That's where Game Time has you covered. They have the Game Time Guarantee. That means you will get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and the same row for less somewhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, you create your account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. It's last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Alex Baum hit a walk-off single that gave the Phillies a comeback win against the Orioles on Tuesday. Our Locked On Phillies host has more on that exciting finish. It's a walk-off winner for your Philadelphia Phillies. Connor Thomas, your host of Locked On Phillies. And what a battle late by the Fightins. I mean, a bottom of the ninth inning that just created opportunities. JT Romito hustling one out. Alec Bohm with the walk-off. It was a great way to finish this game. I mean, Bryce Harper had a big home run uh, just a little bit earlier before the ninth inning to go ahead and tie that game up. And then the Orioles take the lead. And then it doesn't matter. The Phillies come back. It wasn't the prettiest game. The offense is still struggling, but this felt like a game that can build momentum, like a breakthrough game. Last night was one of their worst losses of the season. Tonight, one of their best wins, and now you have an opportunity to go out and win this series tomorrow. I mean, (laughs) what a difference a couple of runs makes. We'll talk about it more on the next episode of Locked on Phillies. The Reds and Brewers met for the eighth time in their last 15 games last night. That dates back to before the All-Star break. With the two teams that know each other very well, it's always difficult to say how things are going to end up. Our Lockdown hosts tell you what went down in their last meeting. Drew Abbott dominates as the Reds do their darndest to hold on to a win in Milwaukee. What's up? This is Jeff Carr from the Lockdown Reds podcast. And Andrew Abbott was brilliant for six innings. Shut out the Brewers with nine strikeouts, outpitched 
Corbin Burns, by the way, uh, Andrew Abbott's now got 16 straight scoreless innings. The rookie can deal. And then the Reds decided to make it interesting in the ninth inning when Daniel Duarte gave up a three-run homer to Christian Yelich. Stop. Stop pitching to Christian Yelich. Just stop doing it. It's, it's driving me crazy, especially in the ninth inning. But, hey, you know what? The Reds got to win, and that's all we care about. The Reds won, and if they win tomorrow, we got a shot at a series win in Milwaukee. What a time to be alive. Hey, everybody. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers. Brewers fell 4-3 to the Cincinnati Reds, down 4 nothing. two outs, bottom of the ninth inning. Put guys aboard Christian. Yelich hits a three-run home run. Brewers put two more runners on the board. Monasterio, the cleanup hitter, this is, again, where, you know, the Brewers, when they lose, you talk about things like this. Monasterio, in the cleanup spot, you like to have somebody who can maybe do something there. Pops out to end the game. But, yeah, I mean, this is where the Brewers are. You know, where they're it's a rotating amount of guys in that cleanup spot because there's no set guy who can deliver runs on this team other than Yelich. Uh, and Contreras. Monasterio comes up. I mean, let's face it. I mean, she's not a fourth-place hitter. Anyway, we'll talk about this coming up on Lock the Brewers later on tonight. After beating the Rangers again last night, the Houston Astros are just a game behind Texas for the lead in the AL West. With a big game coming up Wednesday, our Locked On hosts go over Tuesday's battle. If nobody's got you, baby, Martin Maldonado's got you. That's right. Martin Maldonado with a big game tonight, a solo shot as well, a big play at the plate, making a difference on the field and in the batter's box. J.P. France, with his ninth quality start of the season, the young rookie is leading or top three in most pitching categories for all rookie pitchers, making a solid bid for Rookie of the Year nominations. As well, Kyle Tucker, what do you know? The guy comes to the ballpark and he just balls out. This guy does it at the plate, hits home runs, he catches fly balls that are going out of the stadium. Oh, but not on Kyle Tucker's right field. Presley made a couple mistakes. The Astros defense backed him up. A solid win. The Astros win 4-3. They get within one game of tying the AL West division leading Rangers and hoping to even it up with Framer Valdez on the game for Game 3. Stay tuned to Locked on Astros for your team every day. The Diamondbacks are still in the middle of the NL wildcard race, but a five-game losing streak going into Tuesday has not helped their case. After hosting St. Louis last night, our Locked on hosts give us all the details. The Cardinals bullpen strikes again, wasting an absolute gem by Steven Matz. Hey, it's JD from Locked on Cardinals, and let's not mince words here. The St. Louis Cardinals bullpen is terrible. Time and time again, they are put in a position to close out ball games, which is their job, and time and time again, they fail miserably. Tuesday night was no exception. After blowing the save and getting rescued by the offense on Monday, the bullpen came in with the team up one to nothing, following six beautifully pitched shutout innings from starter Steven Matz, and they give up three runs and two winnings, and the Cardinals fall three to one. Still not really sure why Chris Stratton was challenging the pinch hitter Corbin Carroll, arguably the best hitter on the Diamondbacks this season when you have 228 hitting Nick Ahmed on deck in a base open. But that's now 24 blown saves on the year. I know all the trade talk is about fixing the starting rotation for next season, but that ain't the only thing that's broken. This bullpen is dreadful and needs just as much attention as the rotation. For the latest updates and info, be sure to keep it locked on Cardinals. Coming up, the Guardians get a big win at home. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Welcome back. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Bo Naylor got his first two-homer game of his career in a Guardians win over the Royals. And our Locked On Guardians host has all of the other details that you need to know from the win. The Guardians cruised to a 5-1 victory over the Kansas City Royals on Tuesday night as Aaron Savali gave the Guardians bullpen a much-needed second night off in a row. I'm Justin Latta, co-host of Lockdown Guardians. Aaron Savali goes eight innings for the Guardians, gives the bullpen a much-needed second night off. Emmanuel Classe did come in to get the ninth 
for the Guardians, although he hasn't pitched since last Saturday, so could use some rest there. Big night for Bo Naylor, a pair of home runs, despite not playing uh, in three of the last four games. He goes over the fence. Uh, is this Aaron Sonali's last start with the Guardians? His next start would come uh, on Sunday. That would be two days for the August 1st trading deadline. Not a whole lot of smoke regarding Aaron Savali out there, but there has been some talk, including us at Lockdown Guardians, about his future here and if the Guardians could use him on the pitching market, which is very thin this time of year. Uh, stay tuned to Lockdown Guardians for more on the Guardians' win over the Royals on Tuesday and the trade deadline ahead. The Athletics and Giants renewed their rivalry on San Francisco's side of the bay on Tuesday, and our Locked On local experts tell us how things finished up in California late. Coming off a six-game losing streak going into tonight, the Giants badly needed a win with the trade deadline approaching, and it wasn't pretty, but they got it done. This is Ben Kasbick with the Locked on Giants podcast. Started with Alex Cobb, who was absolutely brilliant, shut down the A's. Uh, he hasn't allowed a run at home since mid-May, and... Uh, the Giants' offense was just struggling big time. They've only scored now 11 total runs, including just two tonight in a win in their last seven games, and that's 1.57 runs per game. And so the Giants are scuffling badly at the plate, but a win is a win, and this was a big one. Like I said, with the trade deadline coming up, you just don't want to collapse and look like sellers when all season long or ever after a starting out well in May, really, they have looked like buyers. And so huge stretch of games coming up, and tonight was a big first step in the right direction, and you'll hear about it on the next episode of Locked on Giants. The Mets scored early against the Yankees and took game one of their two-game Subway series. Our Locked on hosts have more for you after the rivalry game in the Bronx. Well, there's nothing like a 9-3 victory against your also struggling New York rival to make you feel better about what's been an awful season. This is Ryan Finkelstein, host of Locked On Mets, and we saw a good game by the Mets on Tuesday night, led by Pete Alonso. Five RBIs, two home runs. The Mets need Pete to get high if they're going to make anything of this season, and this was a very good start to that. Also got a home run from Daniel Vogelback, which was a sight for sore eyes. Uh, he has a couple lately. Don't know if he's going to get a little bit hot himself. And then Jeff McNeil quietly with a three RBI game. Also on the pitching front, Justin Verlander, excellent. Six scoreless innings, starting to look like that $43 million ace the Mets paid for this offseason. And, you know... Nights like this, you have a little bit of hope. Now you zoom back and you think about where this team has been this year. Maybe not so much, but for a day, Mets fans can be happy, and I'll be talking about that. And if Pete Alonso can carry them on tomorrow's edition of Locked on Mets. If you take the earned runs out of Domingo Herman's pitching line, it's actually not that bad. But you can't do that, can you? I'm Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked on Yankees, and Domingo Herman had himself a night. And not in a good way. Six innings. Okay, that's fine. Seven hits. Mm. Six earned runs. <laughs> One walk and nine strikeouts. Pete Alonso, two home runs off Herman. Also had a um, an RBI hit in the first inning. Just just a mess for Domingo Herman. Things weren't working for him. Plus, the Yankees couldn't do anything against Justin Verlander. Not too surprising because their offense is not great. Had the bases loaded, couldn't do anything. We go through their numbers with runners in scoring position. And if you want to find out just how bad they are, please tune in to the next Locked On Yankees, where we also preview the finale of the 2023 Subway Series between Carlos Rodon and Jose Quintana. That's it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game MLB. We thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every weekday. It's the second half of the season. The trade deadline is around the corner. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked On MLB and your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.